Before I begin the introduction on Brother Aaron's particular topic, I wanted to share a couple of thoughts quickly on the topic that we've chosen corporately for our meetings this weekend, the illumination and its redemptive function. Now, first of all, it's been mentioned several times. In the beginning, God created light. Well, what was the first thing he did after he created that light but to separate it from the darkness? God made an evident separation. Darkness was removed from the light, and this separation was by God. But in the earth, in the earth realm anyway, this separation would not last for very long. Darkness would seek to mingle itself again with the light, hoping to overtake it and to shut it out. Mankind was confronted with that darkness in the temptation when Eve was in the garden. And when she yielded to it, that's when darkness began to move in. And it was going to shut out every aspect of light that it possibly could. However, God's intention from the beginning of having darkness separated from light would not be frustrated forever. And Sister Tasha mentioned this text, but when he created light and spoke it into existence, that was a time when he was sowing light in hope. Psalm 97, 11 says that light is sown for the righteous. And there was a particular day, just like a farmer plants a seed, there's a particular day when he expects that seed to come forth and produce fruit. Just as God sowed that light, he had a fullness of time when that light was going to spring up. Matthew 4, 16, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Here we see what the Lord had sown in the beginning coming to pass. It's springing up in the earth again. This is going to be a time of redemption. Jesus, the light of the world, was going to redeem that separation that God had made between the light and the darkness that he initiated in the beginning. Not only to recover what it was in the beginning, we've talked about this many times before, but also to multiply that light to such a degree that in time there would be no darkness left at all, that the light would overtake the darkness and, and cause it to flee away. So particularly now, Brother Aaron's text is 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. It says, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And we see, first of all, there was something that the Lord had to remove. It was a barrier to the light, something that shut the light out. Death was an environment where men sat in great darkness. That's what it was. It was dark. It was death. And no one could see any light in that place. That darkness was oppressive, like the darkness that could be felt in Egypt. But Christ abolished death, and so now men who sat in that environment would be delivered, and they could come to a place where they could see a great light. Now consider the one who came to bring life and immortality to light. It was Jesus himself. Jesus, the light of the world, he's also said to be the one who lightens every man. It is Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. Also, it is said that he alone, he only hath immortality. This is the one who came to bring these things to light. All of those things, life and light and immortality, are contained in that person of Jesus Christ. So when he came to bring us light and life and immortality, he's actually bringing himself to men. When he brings these things to light and shows these things, he's opening himself up so that we can know him and we can understand these things. He possesses them, and so he illuminates his person in bringing them to light. He gives us a full view of opening himself up. Now, not only can they be seen but he's brought them to light, making them known in such a way that we can take hold of them. We can now possess these things also. Now, light does not hide, but everywhere light touches, things are made manifest. Amen. However, this great light has to be seen in light. Whenever you're in darkness and there is a great light, it's too much yeah. for our eyes to behold. And we yeah. can't see clearly. The splendor of light can actually hide. We've seen that in one of our songs. But this, in, in thy light, we see light. So Brother Ricky's topic that he just spoke to us of is shining the lights in our heart 
the Lord had to do this also to enable us to behold the light that he was going to bring forth, the ability to see and understand these things. So Brother Aaron is going to uh, open these things up, particularly that the Lord shined light on life and immortality through the gospel. Amen. 